Hello? This is a public communication services collect call from... Other state. An inmate at the Calumet County Jail. The use of three-way or a call rating will disconnect the call. This call will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, dial 5 now. To hear the cost of this call, dial 8. Hello? Hi, Stephen. It's Laura. Hi. Right. How are you? Yeah. Better ones. I'm in the cell block now. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I go up to... I climb the walls, kind of. What's it like in there? What's it like? Uh, the worst thing you can ever think of. You're trapped. Got nowhere to look out. Don't see nothing. All you see is cement walls and a door. Yeah. How, how big is the room? Oh, I don't know. Probably four feet by... Five and a half feet, something like that. Oh my God! Well, so it's small. Lie down. Huh? You can't even really lie down. You know, they got the bed kind of. You know, the bed might be maybe six feet. Uh -huh. You know, in that part. And so it has a door, not not bars. No, it's got a door. Got no bars. You can't see out. All you do is see in that room. Is it dark in there, or? No, the light stays on 24 hours a day. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So I saw Debbie on television tonight. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> <laughs> How was your visit with her? Well, it's better. Yeah. You know. You know, she don't have to travel that far, so, you know, when mom, dad, or whatever, whoever, can't come up, you know, then she'll come up, yeah. you know, so it makes it easier for them than if I got somebody else coming up. So, Stephen, can you, can you tell me what, what, if anything, they told you when they were bringing you to the lockup, or what yeah, that was like? They didn't tell me nothing. They just said they got orders to lock me up in the hall. Both times. They couldn't give me a reason. And this last one, the sheriff, I guess, uh, said to lock me up in the hole. He shot my phone off, and I didn't even know about it. You know, the officer come in here and said, well, your phone don't work? I said, I don't know, I think so. Because I used it that morning, but then I haven't used it. So I checked and it was dead. So they, they had it shut off, so I didn't call nobody. How long were you in the lockup? Uh, I went there about 4 o'clock yesterday to about uh, 3.30 today, or somewhere in there. That's because I kept on asking them, then asking them about the visits. I knew Debbie was coming up to see me. You know? And what happens when you're in lockup? I mean, can anybody reach you, like your attorney, or can you contact your attorney? Or I can't do nothing in there. I told them that I was supposed to call my attorney this morning, but they never got me or nothing. You know, they, I talked to my attorney last night that he called up here, that they, they got me out of the hole, and I called them. So if he calls you, you can, he, that's the one incoming call you can take is from your attorney? Yeah. Well, that's good, at least. Yeah. He can reach you. Yeah. But then I didn't know what was going on, or whatever, I talked to Steve today when I got back. I called him. Yeah. Because Dean was out of town, I guess, uh, or out of the, a different county or something. So how did you feel after you talked to Steven? Uh, puzzle? Did it make no sense? Couldn't believe it. The only thing I think of is, uh, them cops must be really uh, telling them what to say. Yeah. Well, you, do, you do all that to a body, and you ain't got no blood in the house. Then Brennan said, uh, the attorney said, uh, drag them out and that. And there'd be blood all over. 
you know, once you cut your, your throat, that's going to bleed. This still don't make no sense. They're trying to nail me. They're trying to, now they're trying to get the kid involved. You know, now he's looking at it like that. The only thing is, I was, why would he say all of this? See, that's what I can't figure out. Unless they got him to, where they wrote everything down, and he talked about it. He had to put it on tape. Now, they were supposed to put tape on every time they, they, they talked to him, because he's a minor. But that's the first time they did it. Then the sheriff come up to me when I was in the hall the first time. Or was it this time? I don't know, it was one of these times. And he said, well, Brendan, uh, said the whole thing would all happen. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. I said, how can he say anything? He came over by the fire, and he went back home. He didn't do nothing else. It didn't make no sense. Well, he didn't tell me not now, sir. This call was from the Calumet County Jail. This call may be monitored or recorded. That's all he told me. He wouldn't say not now, sir. Ian, can you speak up a little? It's hard to hear you. You know, you're yeah. There's a buzzing. And mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sorry. Wait, no. I don't know. I guess Dean, he's going to come up tomorrow to see me. At nine o'clock, you have to go over from the prove he's lying that he's setting them up. Well, we're going to court tomorrow. Brendan has to make his initial appearance tomorrow at ten a.m. Yeah. So we're going for that, and. I don't know yet who in your family is going, but, but we'll be there. I know. guess Mara is in uh, Yvonne. Okay. I don't know who else. Yeah. Well, you know, you were saying before you don't know what would, make, what would cause him to make those statements, but I was thinking before, I mean, can you remember back to when you were... 23 years old, you know, and, and you got picked up for the penny thing, you know. I mean, do you remember being that young and what it felt like to have people questioning you and, you know, accusing you of something you didn't do? I mean, can you, does it help you identify with Brendan at all? Well, maybe a little bit, but they're always, they're always pressuring you. They won't leave you alone. They'll keep you in that room for hours and hours. They keep it going. Again, one of them will leave and another one will come in and, you know, and they will keep it going. And sometimes they'll take a little break and come back in and, and you go over and over. And say, the surf back then, the surf thought I was going to break. He's sooner or later on the break. But I don't break over for something I didn't do. You know, I'll stay strong. You know, I'll never fail. You know, if something I didn't do, I'll never admit to it. If I did it, I'll admit right away. You know, yeah, I did it. I'll take the punishment. I'll do the time. You know. Yeah, it's interesting because when we were talking to Steve recently, we were talking about how hard it was for you to be in prison all those years and be what they called a denier. Yeah. You know, and I thought, like, did it ever cross your mind to say you assaulted this, you know, this penny when you hadn't, you know, just to make prison life easier for yourself? No. Uh-uh. I remember saying I did it, you know. They called me in the office once at Green Bay, the psychiatrist or the, the sex assault group. He said, why don't you just admit to it? He said, I admit to something I didn't do. 
you know, I got, I don't know, fences, you know, plugged them, then he kicked me out of his office, you know, and that was the last time I seen him. What what happened, Stephen? You did what? Did he kick you out of his office? I don't know, I was cussing him out a little bit, and then he kicked me out of his office. But from, from that time to uh, the time I got out, I guess he always knew that I was innocent with the crime. And I found out, I think through Steve or, or somebody I did, that there was a statement in my file or, or what he said or something. What was his name? Do you remember? I don't remember. It's been too long ago. Yeah. But I didn't know that. Not at that, at that time. Well, I mean, how does the... Before this happened with Brendan, how did the pressure you were dealing with in this case compare to that pressure, you know, back in 85? Uh, I think this pressure is probably a little worse than than that one, even if I went through it once. You know, it's, you know, after the first time, you know, it was hard, and you got, you know, you got all that anger built up in you, and, you know, you know you didn't do it, so you always got something, if somebody's coming to something, you can always tell them, you know, and cuss them out and everything. Where, this time is, it don't pay saying nothing on to these or cussing them out or nothing because that's just more evidence that they got them, you know. And it's harder this time. You know, now I just want to just sit back, relax, watch TV, you know, use the phone and wait for the lawyer to do his job and and be done with. You know, I didn't. I don't figure this is going to happen to me again. You know, I figured the first time well, that was enough. But then even, you know, I've been in the hole before, another bit in Tennessee, and that wasn't the worst. You know, going to the hole here, I just. That's the worst feeling I ever had in my whole bed. You know, I got scared. I got the shakes. I couldn't eat right away. This call is from the Calumet County Jail. This call may be monitored or recorded. And then you hear my dad is sick. You don't feel good and that. And then you got to worry about that. This part was the hardest part going to the hall. <clears throat> are, you, are you speaking about recently with your dad, or? Yeah. Well, yesterday, the day before, he was in bed sick. Yeah, that's what your mother told me. Yeah. But she did say he's feeling better today, and I saw him today, and he looked good. Yeah. So you should feel better about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I had a fault. I don't know where it went. <laughs> um, but we're talking to Steve, and he don't understand none of this either. You know? Yeah. And why can't they, you know, they already investigated the case, I mean, the, the property already. You know, why would they have to go over it again? You know, yeah. You know, Steve says there's, there's something up. Well, how do you feel now, you know, about this involving your nephew? How does that make you feel? Well, it is, I don't know, I feel sorry for them. They're, they pressed him so much where he's saying all of this, you know. He, he probably don't know which way to go. You know, it's, it's sad for for him and for me 
to put him in the spot. You know, he's only 16 years old. He's only a kid yet. You know, that's probably the only thing that hurts. And they're forcing him to say it is. You know, they keep up and keep up. What, being 16, you're going to say something, you know. What they say, you're going to say, if you keep on hearing it. You know, when I was 23, they were always saying stuff, you know. You just think back then to now, now they're doing it to him, what they tried to do to me before. Yeah. And before, I even went to the surf. You know, and I talked to him. They told him I didn't do it. But he said it was too late then. So, I mean, I know you were in the hole, but do you feel like you're getting information, Stephen? Have you, have you seen the news? Have you seen the press conferences? No, I've just seen what was on tonight a little bit. That brother made a statement out and and what all happened and everything else that I've seen. And I might be looking at some more charges now. And I said, which the whole thing don't make no sense at all. And how do you think this affects your chances of getting out on bail? Well, it probably, it probably hurts a lot. You know, especially if, you know, Brendan said all of this. You know, yeah. um, probably make somebody look like a monster. Mm. You know, if I was out there and all of that was happening, you know, I don't know what side would you want to believe. You know, but with all of this stuff happening, there's got to be something. There's something wrong. You know. You know, and they're not are trying for more and more. Not are they got more stuff. It don't make no sense. And it's, I don't know. What do you think? How long did you talk to Bob before? Uh, it kind of hurt my feelings. You know, she thought I had anything to do with this. As I helped her out, I did a lot of stuff for her. And to put her son up in this, I would never do that. You know? And I told her that, uh, I said, the cow's plan at that in, her, in his head. I said, they must have wrote a, a statement out, and he read it, and that's what he had to stick by. You know? Do you think you were able to reach her, though? I think a little bit I did. I told her, I'm just a guy, too. I didn't do nothing. And he didn't either. I told her, I said, well, you know, believe in your brother. So I'm telling the truth. I said, I got nothing to hide. I said, I said none of that don't make no sense. She cut her throat, and I cut her stomach, or whatever, and dragged her out of the house. There'd be a trail. You can't clean up no blood. Not like that. I said, I see. This call was from the Calumet County Jail. This call may be monitored or recorded. I told her, think a little bit. Okay. Oh, she told me, well, how would he know all that evidence? Well, from the cops. Right. You know, the cops put it in his brain. He's 16 years old, and it's going to sink in a little bit. Right. And it happens all the time. That's why I feel sorry for him. Well, the thing I can't figure out is why now? Why now? I figured that out. Because I got my lawsuit. Now I got a good lawyer. They think I've got a chance of beating this now, and they got no evidence, no proof that I didn't even did anything. It's all, you know, bits and pieces. 
and they figured they needed something solid. Yeah. And with my good attorney, you know, I suppose, well, we've got to do something. Yeah. And that's all I can figure. You know, because they don't talk around here. That's why they got me way in the back here, so I, and uh, tell her, the jailers, they want me back here and sit out there. You know, because I can hear more up there. And when I'm up there, they shut down their radios. You know, so where I can't hear them. Huh? Where are you now? I'm in, in the back where I was, in the cell. You know, I'm almost on the back back. You know, there's only one more block besides my block here. I'm in D block and there's D, uh, D, E, E block yet. Yeah. That's the last one. Well, I mean, the only thing I can say about Barb, you know, I mean, your family as a whole right now is, you know, they're probably just really scared and confused and... Well, who won't be? You know, worried, worried for you, worried for Brendan, you know, mm -hmm. and it places Barb in a terrible position, you know. So all I can say is, you know, hang in there. You know, she, she knows the truth and, you know, all of you do, so... And and the truth will come out. Yeah. I'm hoping it will. It should come out. Well, that I mean that's what we're working so hard for. You know, because that's that's the most important thing here is that the truth comes out. Oh yeah. You know? But is the truth ever going to come out? That's another thing with these cops. Somebody's got to know something and talk. I don't know how, but there's got to be a way where some of you talk. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure that way out. How I can make, I don't know, one of the cops talk. I don't know. Set a reward? I don't know. Yeah. I know money talks. I ain't got enough to put that in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there's going to be more coverage tonight at 10. Yeah, I'll be sleeping by then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, You're not staying up nice anymore? No, I try to go to bed early and stay up all day. You know. Okay. But they've been screwing me up, taking me to the hall, you know. Yeah. So I don't know. I figure when I hear keys and they come in India, oh, they're coming in India again. Yeah. You know. But I hope this stuff works out with Brendan and maybe with a new lawyer, you know, he can say they put it to him or something. Yeah. You know, something's got to come out. Yeah. Well, I hope you have a good meeting with Dean tomorrow. Yeah. And, um, like I said, we'll we'll be at the courthouse tomorrow, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I don't know what if anything will be going on afterwards. But uh, you know you can you you know feel free to call us anytime. You can call me tomorrow um, over the weekend. Yeah. You know if if there's room on your visitors list on Sunday, Moira and I can come see you. Yeah. You know. So. Um, yeah, that's the only way I got out there, I guess. Yeah, see, see who's coming out, and, you know, we would, we would definitely come. Um, so, but just, you know, just hang in there and try to get some sleep and, and have a good meeting tomorrow, and, you yeah. know, we'll keep working. Yeah, yeah I figured that when Jody gets out, too, they'll make up a thing and have, go around to everybody's house and have them sign it. Where... It's okay for to let me out. Yeah. I figured if I can do some of that, maybe that would help me too. You mean like a petition? Yeah. 
Yeah. But yeah, I don't know how to write it up, and I told Jody to see what she can do with it, but. Yeah. Well, I hope we get to meet her next week. That would be really nice. Yeah, she'll be with my Ma. Okay, good. Yeah, Ma's got to pick her up at, I don't know, quarter after five in the morning. Okay. Well, if you speak to Jody, give her our best. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I mean, she can feel free to call us anytime she wants. This call is from the Calumet County Jail. This call may be monitored or recorded. But uh, hopefully we'll get to meet her next week. She, she sounds like a great person. Yeah. Yeah, she changed a lot, so i got to give her a lot of credit. Yeah. We saw some nice footage of her from um, back in 2004 when the two of you were in well, Milwaukee. You were in Milwaukee with Walt. Yeah. And you look, you look really nice together. Yeah, I think it, it looks good on there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I guess you'd just gotten a makeover or something because somebody asked you about your hair. Oh, that could be. But, uh, yeah, you guys look great. Yeah. yeah, I think we're made for each other. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah I told her that I invited you to a wedding. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, I thought you could wait till everything is done. <laughs> and I said, I can't. I said, we're going to have to do it now as soon as I get out. Yeah. I said, I don't want to wait. That would be a great thing to have happen. Yeah. You know, why put it off when I don't want to? Yeah. Well, that'll get you through these days. Yeah. Yeah. So I made her a little, I think, a little happier, too. Good. Yeah, I told her before. I said, we'll wait till all this is done with, then we'll get married. Yeah. But why should I wait? Yeah. You know, then now this all comes up, so I don't know. Yeah. Well, hopefully they can get the truth out of there pretty soon. Maybe something will happen tomorrow or something, I don't know. Yeah, I hope so too, Stephen. Yeah. Well, they'll probably be televising it tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. So maybe you'll, maybe you'll be able to see it. Yeah. You know, you see all ducks on there. Yeah. And said, well, they always, but they, they, but her brother, he's still puzzled though. He, he said uh, it don't make no sense yet. You know, at last, it was on 26. Oh, really? Yeah. And they were just trying to cut him off before he said that, but he said it. A lot of this does don't make no sense. Yeah. You know. But maybe they got their down too or something. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I can't say anything about that because I haven't seen, I know he called a press conference last night, but I haven't seen it. Yeah. So, but um, I would like to see it because, you know, I'd like to, I mean, yeah. I can imagine, you know, what, what he'd say, but it's important to see it as well, obviously. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, Stephen, the most important thing right now is for you to focus on yourself and your case, you know. Yeah. And, you know, try to save your energy for that. And yeah. I don't know. I wish I, wish I could offer you more now, you know. Take it to maybe Dina have me some good news tomorrow or something. Yeah, I hope so. <coughs> Otherwise, I got time to, for the 17th. So. Right. Yeah, and we'll definitely be here. So, I mean, I imagine at this point that that will be here straight through. So, yeah. we'll be in town. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, Nanda. So I'll talk to you later then. Yeah. All okay. right. Try to have a good night. Yeah. You too then. Okay. Stephen. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.